<laughs> Welcome back to more BS. I'm Chef Babette. And I'm Shabnam. And today I want to talk about something that you guys have been talking about for a long Ooh, time. Everybody's talking about. How vegan food is so expensive. Yeah, that's what they say. Well, what the hell are you eating? <laughs> like, listen. If I go dine at a vegan restaurant, it is expensive. Probably is. I'm paying, like at Monty's, like the burgers, they're like $18. They're really expensive. But here, when I choose to dine at a place that I know is fully plant-based, and I know the ingredients they're sourcing, I know what their business practices are and their ethics are and their values right. are, I am okay You're with okay paying with it. for that. Yeah. But let me tell you something about making your own vegan food. There you go. It's cheap. It is cheaper. It is cheaper than you think. Um, for example, right now, costs of beef has, have, have gone up extraordinarily. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Beef and chicken. A pound of beef could be over $8.99. Eight I've seen in just like pavilions here in California. I don't know what it's like in on the East Coast or in the Midwest. But when I go to the grocery store, a pound of Impossible is often on sale for $5.99. So I'm finding that my meat alternatives are even now le more affordable than my meats. Wow. And I can do a burger for even cheaper than that in my restaurant. And I think we should talk about that. I, I Well, yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, you know, when I first started making, um, a week, we call, at Stuff I Eat, we have a, a nut burger. My partner, Balaj, is obsessed yeah. with this. They're really good. They're, They're really so good. good. And when I first started doing them... I added so many ingredients. We were just talking about this. The we other were day. just talking about it. And tell I them mean, what you used to put in this thing. Okay. So when I first started, I used to use walnuts, portobello mushrooms, a vegan cheese, um, a jerk sauce, um, a, a, a bell pepper, um, an onion. No rice. No, the rice comes in, but. I would make the loaf out of all of that. Okay. Bake the loaf. Uh, chill the loaf. Then pull the loaf out and dump uh, a wild rice blend in it to then form my burgers. I don't use hardly any of those ingredients anymore. Now it's like a five now ingredient. It's, it's like the nuts. I can't. I'm not giving my recipe away. No. But it's only is it nuts. Mm -hmm. I give them my recipe. And the, and the, uh, I probably use maybe three to four ingredients. Wow, now. isn't that crazy? And I don't bake the loaf anymore. You just cook it on I the just, fryer or on the. No, no, no. I I used to make do the loaf, chill it, and then add the rice, and then form the patties. Oh my God! Now I take my mix, that walnut mix, out of the food processor. Add the cooked rice to it and form my patties, and the patties cook on the griddle wow. when when we're making the burger. Wow. I went from all of that, but I had to figure out my own burger because I wasn't interested in Impossible. You know, my husband's really really picky about like even even um what's that one sugar that they put in everything? Um, I can ingest that sugar. What is it? Um, cane. Okay. Uh, um, it doesn't really break me out like refined sugar mm -hmm. and high fructose corn syrup. But he doesn't want any kind of sugar in anything. He's super, super clean. So we had to come up with our own burgers. That was a must if we were going to have burgers and stuff I eat. So that's why we decided with the walnuts. Wow. And and, and when I came came up with it, I was just playing and adding a bunch of stuff to make sure it would stick. And uh, now it's like, Wow, unbelievable that I have I it I've cut my my prep time down, everything. Yeah. And so here's what I need you to realize. When you talk about vegan food being expensive in life food preparation, something's either gonna cost you time, that's true, or it's gonna cost you money. Yeah. Time or money. Mm -hmm. I can get a real, real cheap meal made out of mushrooms, a little bit of pasta, some walnuts, yes. and some canned sauce. Mm -hmm. I can make a bolognese with a little bit of carrots, onions, there and celery. Boom, done. And it's done, done with son. those simple eight ingredients yeah. 
for less than $3.85 per person for a family of six. Don't you think though sometimes people speak out of ignorance? You don't you don't really know how to shop to buy to prepare vegan food, so you just assume it's just expensive. It's more expensive than a dead animal butt. And I'll be honest, if I was somebody, maybe somebody at home that's watching this that probably is one of those poor people that I buy all my vegetables and they rot in my fridge because Yo, I don't eat them. I don't eat them. Then definitely vegan food is expensive. But I want to talk about your cost of health then. There you go. Like, if you're, if you're worried about your cost of food, then you obviously are not worried about your cost of illness. I want to give you some numbers here by the USD, the USDA Dietary Guidelines in 2020. It basically said every year we spend $147 billion on obesity, $245 billion on type 2 diabetes, and $316 billion on heart, on heart, heart disease, disease. <laughs> annually. Wow. Every year. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> and the main contributors to things like type 2 diabetes, obesity, and heart disease are da, 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 poor nutrition and lack of adequate physical activity. Wow. Two things that are completely preventative. Both of them. But we have to educate ourselves. So instead of making you wrong, what I'd like to do today is tell you uh, some tips and tricks. There's this book by Tony Akamoto. O-K-A-M-O-T-O. -O -O. It's called Plant Based on a Budget. Uh, she's got a blog called Plant Based on a Budget. She's amazing, Tony Akamoto. And she, her book basically tells you how to live vegan $35, $35 a week. What? For a family of four. That's nuts. Seven days a week. Stop it. It's amazing. No way. Uh -huh. I don't even, I need to see that book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Plant based on a budget. And honestly, I heard her oh on the Physicians gosh. Committee of Responsible Medicine podcast. Uh, that's the um, exam room podcast uh. with Chuck Carroll, which I would highly recommend to anybody. Um, but really, there's some really big tips and tricks. Like, I think a lot of people give canned food like a bad name. No, you shouldn't. But you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. Things like jackfruit. They have so beans. much in cans. That's where oh I get my, my god. Yes, that's where I get my jackfruit from. And, and that's where I get my beans day. from. Right. Like unless you're one of those people that you buy them in bulk, then you soak them, then you cook them, which is the way that I would highly recommend doing it. But honestly, if you're on a budget and you've got a time crunch, canned vegetables and fruits are and really great. And we need way to, to go. have some cans in our house anyway. Because you never know what could happen. You want pantry safe and pantry staple foods and that is what makes veganism easy on a dime budget. Yes. Okay, so what can we fill our our pantry with? What do you think are your go-to staples at Stuff I Eat? At Stuff I Eat, let's see, I have to have my Bragg's liquid amino because oh, yeah. that's my salt. I, we don't use a lot of uh, salt salt because it's higher in sodium than the Bragg's. But it's 100% all essential amino acids. So for those of you that are looking for that complete protein, yes. throwing in some Bragg's aminos gives you that complete amino acid profile. Gotta have, uh, also we have to have the sea salt, but I love garlic. Uh, gotta have garlic. Gotta have your bulbs. Gotta have that. Gotta have, um, what am I, uh, peppers, red peppers. Mm -hmm. I love cayenne. I love, uh, paprika. I love the smoky paprika. Those Ooh. are things that I have to have in my kitchen. Um, coconut oil. Oh, that's a go-to. We have to have coconut oil. And now I added avocado oil there because I realized avocado that's oil. how I make was my it? own mayo. Hey, yeah. was that amazing yeah. with the... That kid, he is vegan chef Chris Star. Oh my god, Th that's another one. We, you were you guys are you just probably saw an amazing interview that oh. we had with him on here, and he is just brilliant. But let's go back to those pantry okay. tables. Yeah, so so those some those are some of the things that I have to have uh, nutritional yeast. Mm -hmm. Got to have that. Oh, I have to have arrowroot powder. Like tomorrow, I'm making um, sweet potato pies. I have them had them in a while and customers are asking for them but i didn't make them today because i didn't have the arrowroot powder i cannot be out of arrowroot powder and even things like pasta are really oh, good man. to have you can have gluten-free versions maria makes a really good gluten-free version but then also if you want gluten-free you can do things like chickpea pasta chickpea lentil pasta, pasta. they got so many black bean pasta now. there is so, so many much. options yes. that are fully 
free of refined sugars and wheats and grains that you can do things that are yes. allergy friendly. Yes, yes, yes. And they're affordable. In addition, things about like when you are creating, like have a meal plan, have a meal plan. Think about the things you want to make that week. Like anything that makes you successful takes a plan. It does. Right? It's so you need to know which clients am I, I need to know which clients am I going to see this week? What time are they coming? I need to have a program designed for all of them a whole month out in advance. So planning, planning, planning. So meal planning requires you to know what's going to be made throughout the week. And the biggest thing to do is to ensure that you're reusing the same ingredients. That was just about to say that. That is what really works with your meal plan. I take, I always have green onion, bell pepper, red onion. I always have to have those because I can make so many dishes. How many of your dishes oh contain those God. things? Almost all of them. There you go. And by the way, there's over 38 menu items on Stuff I Eat's menu. Yeah, almost all of them. I've got those same ingredients in there. What You had about 38 of your... Oh, I mean, I, you, I that is a must-have. Every single week, I have to have my bell pepper, my green onion, and my red onion. I, I prep that at the beginning of the week, period. Danielle uses it on the griddle. She has a whole container that has all three of those in it. I have to have those. And so that what you're, what you're sharing with them is so spot on. Because you find recipes that you don't have to have so many outlandish ingredients. Yep. You keep it simple. Keep it very, very simple. And you, what if you wanted to make, I'll have spaghetti today. Tomorrow, I'm going to use some of the similar ingredients, red sauce, la da 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 and I'm making chili beans. Got a can of chili beans. It's just... And the next day, then, you're making some enchiladas. There you go. So, you can... Oh, my God. That's, that's three days. And you can use the same ingredients and have totally different types of cuisines from different places of the world it's in so your true. own kitchen for less than three dollars per meal it's so true. so vegan food is not expensive it either takes time or money yes but not both right it doesn't take both and another thing that i think that people don't so that's the canned stuff that's the pantry stable stuff frozen produce for those of you that are guilty of like having rotted vegetables oh, man. in so your many, fridge like so many you know you that. get up in the week and you're like i am going to be healthy this yes, week yes and you go buy up a whole bunch of stuff you were super excited and then and then and then a week and a half that green onion is like, slimy Wah. everything is slimy and sticky and, and and a hot mess because you did nothing. So first things it. first, compost that shit. There you go. Compost it. And secondarily, buy frozen vegetables. And, and, and you know, but really, first thing, it's kind of have an idea of what you're, what you're about to make. Don't just bring all this stuff in and then be like, okay, I got some vegetables. Let me see what I can do. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have an idea. Because when, when you start becoming a tuned-in chef, when you become a tuned-in chef, that's when, like, like vegan chef Chris Tucker, right. I've got tofu, I've got these spices, I've got this sauce. And I can make this, this, And I can make this. a tofu barbecue sandwich, or I can make, like, uh, uh, a salt and pepper tofu, an Asian-style dish. And I'm like, how the hell, how is this? And he's like, and I'm making an avocado And mousse. he says, and I didn't go to the store. This is just stuff what I, I had have here. I have here. And I'm like, mm -hmm. man. But you will get there once you learn how to plan your meals. And baby, Google, they, uh, these young people are Googling everything. They have some of the most awesome vegan recipes online. All you have to do is just Google. Yeah. Vegan this, vegan that, vegan that. And they will give you some more than one recipe yep. for similar dishes. I mean, like some of my favorites, we have like, we have the cookbook from Rich Roll. Oh, we have um, the Korean vegan Joanne Molinero is really good. Uh, Plant-based RD is amazing. My friend Naturally Zuzu is amazing. I mean, vegan chef Chris Tucker. We have so many people that are actually creating so much content. And they give you this information for free on the internet. Yes, they do. And so it does take a little bit of research. It does take a little bit of time, but I promise you, your cost of wellness is a whole lot cheaper than your cost of illness. It really is. It um, really is. And We're it's so sick 
as a society unnecessarily. Um, and there are plenty of doctors that give a lot of information like Dr. Joel Furman, who talks about a nutritarian diet, um, which is very heavily in plants, fruits, vegetables, beans, nuts, legumes, um, and seeds. He, and to say to avoid like, refined oils, refined sugars, but this is just a vegan diet. There are plenty of doctors like Dr. Esselstein um, that are out there, Dr. Montgomery, Montgomery Dr. Garth Davis, that are touting a plant-based lifestyle because the evidence shows that it is healthier for your heart and for your wallet. There you go. So what do you want? <laughs> what, what do you want? What do you want? You know, um, what I wanted to talk about also is how much do you buy in bulk? Um, sometimes we do, like we get, oh, there are certain things we have to have in bulk, like um, our oats, our rolled oats, and, and, and pretty much we use companies that sell organic products. So, of course, our flowers, our oats, our Your nuts, nuts uh, our rice, um, lentils or beans and so the thing to remember is when you go and buy these nuts in like trader joe's for like this small package they're pretty expensive and mm -hmm. so i could see why you're like oh my god this it's is so this. expensive right? but there are places where you could do them wholesale and you could save yourself a lot of money yeah um and 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 a lot of the wholesale plate you can go to costco and come up, really. Costco yeah. has some pretty good prices. I mean, I get my bags of rice there. That's no what doubt. I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. So um, that's basically, it's the same thing. The same thing you do when you're eating death, you do when you're eating rice. Same Except thing. it gives you life. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to make you sick. But yeah, we um, most of our produce is delivered to us um, through, through a, a, a produce company that sells only vegan produce. Because we're pretty much, we've never been, um, it's never been authenticated by the government. We've never paid $9,000 to have a organic only stamp on our window, but we're pretty much 90% organic. If we can find organic, that's what we're using. And a lot of people ask, you know, should I not eat it if it's not organic? No, no you should just wash the hell out of it. Yeah, we'll wash it. And I mean, it's our life right now. Sometimes you can find it organic. I just say as long as it's as close to life as possible. I agree. And listen, if it comes down to your argument of getting organic fruits and vegetables, but you're still willing to eat death. Mm -hmm. I think you really need to be thinking about these things. But But you have to also think about... What does the quality of life mean to you? I mean, that's very important um, because when we're sick, our quality is out of the window. I mean, we don't have a good quality of life. So it has to matter to you. It has to matter to you for you to actually transition. And a good quality of life has always mattered to me because I saw a mother who after a certain time, especially after the stroke, the whole quality was just done. But she had a lousy quality, a double knee replacement. She was just, you know what I mean? C c look, couldn't see out of one eye, look, look blind in one eye and couldn't see out the other one. And I'm not, I'm just telling you the honest to God truth. Um, so for me, I, I, I looked at that and I was just like, that is not quality. You understand? Whenever we went to the supermarket, she had to have the basket because that was her walker. Mm -hmm. I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't going for that. So I knew I knew, needed nutrients. And that's, that's where I head first now is nutrition. And you know, like when you think about things of post-op or post-surgery or post-illness, yeah. all the medications that you're taking, how it's killing the, 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 the good bacteria in the gut. Because that's what antibiotics do. They kill everything, and, good and bad. And right? all medicine is liver toxic. And so when you think about, do I want to heal from something? It may, you may need medical intervention, like say if you need radiation for, for, for cancer. But oftentimes, like eating healing foods and herbs, things like turmeric can reduce inflammation and can really help improve circulation um, and things at a metabolic level. And so... When we talk about plants being able to heal and the cost of health outweighing the cost of illness, I think 
that's what you need to think about because as Babette says quality of life oh, quality is everything longevity is cool but yeah but do I want to live, live a long life where someone else is is taking care of me and wiping my ass for me and I, I don't want to live that way I don't either and I don't think many of you would want to either mm -hmm. unless that's your thing but you know well what happens if something happens to that per person that's taking, taking care, care of you? you what happens then I know and a lot of people go through that Right. Yeah. So knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Vegan food is not that expensive. Check out Tony Akamato's book, Plant Based on a Budget, yeah, where you can get food, $35 out. meal plan for the week for $35, $35 or less. Everybody ought to be running for that book. That's right. <laughs> and hopefully we can get her on <laughs> is this it podcast. Amazon? On, yep. It's on Amazon. Hopefully we can get her on this podcast. That would be enough. great. Right? Yeah. I would love that. But these are just some suggestions that we have and that she suggests in her book as well. So give it a Give it a try. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.